Rev up your engines. Gage Hayden says, what do you think of CVT transmissions? I recently drove a Nissan CVT and it was the worst thing I've ever driven. I'm not a fan of CVT transmissions in general, but you have to understand, there's like six or eight different varieties of them. Now, all these companies have different setups, so it's not all the same design. And the Toyotas, I haven't seen any real problems with them. I personally don't like them myself. I just don't. I like a standard transmission. You get more control. But they're going toward the CVTs. And I certainly would never buy a Nissan with a CVT because even from the beginning, Nissan had problems with their CVT when they going from a regular automatic to a CVT type automatic transmission. I'm not a fan of it. And I definitely would never buy a Nissan with a CVT unless they radically change stuff. I mean, who knows? Maybe 10 years from now, I'll say, hey, they're good, but believe me, I work on the things. I talk to all my friend mechanics too that are transmission specialists to keep up with it and say, you know, what's you see that's good now? What do you see that's bad? So I keep it all in my head so I can tell you people the truth about what's going on. And I'm not just some guy talking through his hat that the company's paying me money to say, oh, those are great cars. And then they give me money in the back door. I don't do that. So <laughs> you never know. Maybe 10 years from now, I'll say, hey, they're good cars. But from my experience with Nissan, I don't think so. Ashley Joyner says, Scotty, what do you think of Root, that new car insurance app? Okay, if you don't mind the car companies getting all the information about your driving and you're a very conservative driver, go ahead and do it because it's going to show that you're driving correctly and maybe you're driving low mileage. Like in my own personal car, I, sometimes I put 900 or 1,000 miles a year because I work out of my house. And when I travel, I fly. I even take Uber to the airport because it's cheaper to take Uber to the airport than it is to park my car there for a couple of weeks. So I'll just take Uber and I don't put much mileage on my cars. So if I put one of those in, they'd say, gee, this guy only drives 900 miles a year and you'd probably pay less to the insurance. But if if you are a person who drives like a maniac, don't even think about that because they're probably going to raise your rate to see how fast you're driving, how fast you stop. All that information is stored and sent to the insurance company. So realize that. Don't think that, oh, I can drive really fast and get better insurance rates. You won't. O'Connor says, Scotty, I'm looking to buy a 2008 Lexus IS250. Is the automatic transmission reliable? Should I buy it with a manual transmission? Thanks. No, they're very reliable. You know, basically it's Toyota, and they had reliable transmissions on them. And you'd have a hard time finding a manual transmission. They didn't sell that many. Uh, they are more fun to drive with the standard. They're a lot faster. <laughs> There's no arguing that. But their automatic transmissions are reliable. I've personally never seen one break, so it's not something that you got to think it's going to break down on you. Yeah, the manuals are more fun to drive. If you like driving fast, I would hold out and look for a manual transmission just because they're more fun to drive. Desandel says, Scotty, what do you think about rust converters? I have rust on my Ford Focus wheel arches. I'm trying to stop it for a while. Okay, for those who don't know, rust converters are those things that you get out of a bottle and you paint it on the rust and it's supposed to convert the rust into a solid primer that you can paint over. Now, for really light surface rust, it helps some. It's no miracle because if you know anything about metallurgy, the steel on a car, it rusts actually from the inside out. So once you see it, it's already too late. It's starting to rust. But you did say for a while. So you could do something like sand down some of the rust at least then put the rust converter, and then you can cover up with fiberglass and bondo if you really want it. It's not a permanent fix, but it can fix it for a while, and it can slow it down. When I was a kid and cheap, I used to try that stuff all the time. I lived up in Niagara Falls in a rust belt. And yes, you know, I'd do it, but then invariably in a year, year and a half, two years, it'll start rusting out of the same hole again anyway. 2502 Chris says, Scotty, I have an 07 caliber S16. What do you think is a good way to check the power steering rack? It seems to rattle. I'm going 25. I'm going slightly left through a neighborhood. I got a video for that, how to check your own car suspension. Basically, what you do is you jack the car up in the air, look for play, look to see if there's any parts that are worn. Or the rack itself, a lot of times the mounts, they're rubber. They'll rot. And then when you're pulling it, you would see that the whole rack assembly moves back and forth a little. That would mean that the mounts are going bad on it. So you want to check all that stuff. Now, if you can't find anything, most honest front-end shops give free estimates. Take it to an honest guy who knows what they're doing. Sometimes it's as dumb as the alignment's off on one side. But you can check the obvious stuff yourself by jacking it up in here. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!